Oh, ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello. It's good to see you, yeah. Um, hey, everybody. I've got some Blade Runner blasters in front of me. I have done videos like this before, compendiums of my Blade Runner blaster collection, and I've just added another one to the collection, so I thought it bears going back to the beginning. Um, this, I'm starting with number three, this is my uh, version of the Hero Blaster. This is gunsmiths from all original gun parts, Steyr, Daimler, Push, uh, uh, 222 target rifle, uh, with parts of the magazine, and then inside is a Bulldog 44. Go oh, from Bulldog, yeah, I think so. Uh, Bulldog <laughs> revolver. Um, and this is absolutely the pinnacle of my replicating of the Blade Runner Blaster, which started in 1986 with this one, manufactured from uh, an Edison Giacatoli ray gun toy that I bought uh, down on Canal Street in New York, uh, augmented with a pair of promotional binoculars here. And uh, 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 there used to be several model companies in the U.S. made one-to-one -one versions of guns. Uh, and Ravel had some of these and some other companies had some. And there was one of a, of a scope, uh, a small scope. Uh, maybe, maybe some of the more sharp-eyed viewers with a better knowledge of this could tell me what kind of scope this front part is. Uh, I added some plastic model parts and this was my first Blade Runner blaster. It used to actually light up. There used to be some lights here. Uh, then, uh, in the early 90s, once I had been working in the special effects industry for a while, I decided to go and make another one. And this is one I hand sculpted this from scratch. Uh, I then was working on Bicentennial Man, and this was around uh, 99. And we were sending stuff out to be chrome plated all the time, so I sent this out to be chrome plated. Um, I loved this piece until I discovered that it was too small. Uh, yeah, and that's what led to eventually making this one. But over here on the right is a really remarkable piece. And this is a replica built by my friend Sean Morgan, a master modeler of epic proportions. Sean has tackled some of the weirdest and most wonderful props in history. Uh, and I have a bunch of his pieces in my collection and they are wonderful. And this is Sean's sculpt of Sid Mead's blaster so Sid Mead, uh, if you don't know who Sid Mead is, you can pause right now and go do a Google image search for Sid Mead and get a little glimpse of just how important he is to film history. He's an industrial, was an industrial designer uh, who did all the futuristic uh, stuff for Blade Runner and countless other movies that you love. I was lucky enough to uh, know Sid a little bit. Uh, I met him at a San Diego Comic-Con and spent a lovely afternoon at his house um, down in uh, uh, Southern California. Uh, and to dis I cannot overstate Sid Mead's importance to me. Uh, the way in which he could integrate the past into his futures and make them feel familiar is really amazing. And when uh, they were ideating Blade Runner, uh, obviously this was the blaster design they ended up with. And famously, what Ridley Scott told me was that he went to the gunsmith, he went to a gun shop in LA with his prop master and like pointed to the various pieces that he wanted to be part of the blaster. Um, but as part of the ideation for the film, Sid Mead actually drew up his version of what Deckard might be holding. And I mean, look, we can see the stylistic differences here. Sid is doing a, a, a real science fiction take. He's sort of taking the gun apart and changing our ideas about it. And what Ridley Scott's built is something that's much more anchored in a, a, a sort of a brutalist reality. Um, but I love this design. And Sean sculpted this many years ago. I've had it in my collection, God, now coming on probably 20 years. Um, and I did a job about eight, nine years ago where I had some stuff uh, vacuum metalized. This isn't chrome plated. This is a um, several micron thick coating of, uh, of aluminum. Uh, and then I weathered it. And I've loved having this piece in my collection. But out there, for many years in the works was a more uh, official replica 
of the of Sid Mead's blaster and I finally obtained one for a reasonable deal and I'm unboxing it for you right now because I am dying to see this. I've been, you know, I knew about it for many years. I knew it was happening. Um, and uh, 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 there's no, there isn't a source for these. You've got to pick them up on eBay or Etsy or, you know, whatever replica prop forum you frequent. Prop Summit, they probably show up from time to time in the junkyard there. Um, but there is no official source for these. They were, they were, you know, released as a limited edition of how many? I'm not even sure it says here. No. Uh, and, you know, that edition sold out a long time ago. But... We're about to take a look. Well, we have a we have a base, excellent. We have a display stand, and this is oh, it doesn't even say what what the edition size is. Oh, oh, oh! It actually has folding functionality. Really, all right. Oh, 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 wow. Fascinating. Does it have, oh, does it have lights? Well, I see an LED and I see a screw as I'm playing around with, so, yeah. Let's see here. Okay, let us crack this open. And we'll see what its power requirements are. Oh, I see. Does it sit like this? Apparently it does. Oh, is there a fuel Oh, there's a fuel cell. Oh, <laughs> so it sits like this and the fuel cell sits there. Okay, that's nice. Well, if there's a fuel cell, then clearly there's gonna be fuel. So let's crack this and put some batteries in it. Triple A's, triple A's. <clears throat> so if this sits like this and that goes, yeah, that's down and that is up. cartridge. All right. So I'm curious if there's an on switch. So I've got a but I've got a light here. You stay there. <clears throat> so it's got a blinking light up there. Is that the sum total of its electronic functionality? Clearly you're running a little bit of wire through there. All right, I can see that. Oh, and I can see the, I can see the LED bulb that is blinking. All right. <laughs> I, I, I will admit to you, audience, that I, I, I was expecting to be more impressed than I think I am. <laughs> uh, this is a lovely display. Uh, and look, 
I love this design. It's weird and it's amazing. And it was made by one of my all time heroes, Sid Mead. So the design right away just makes me really, really happy. Um, that being said, I, there are aspects of my chrome plated quick and dirty paint up that I like better than this. Um, this, um, this functionality is such a strange thing. Oh, okay. So these light up and these light up, but again, it just looks like there's one bulb. Oh, and these light up. Okay. Look, I mean, you know, obviously what this would kind of want to be is a sort of power meter that goes, but adding like that type of electronics to something like this, that's going to be very expensive. Um, I really like pulling the fuel cell out. That's kind of neat, especially since there was a whole fuel cell idea about the original blaster uh, that never got executed into the film. Um, that's a nice little bit of, uh, of functionality. Yeah. <clears throat> I, 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 it's an interesting issue about prop replicas and their electronic functionality. It is, a, it is an int interesting issue, right? If you are a company and you are making these things and you're going to make, a, let's say, 2,000 of them, um, you have a per part cost that at 2,000 is probably going to be fairly high. And so in order to make money selling your 2,000, you want to, you want, you want to sell out that run, right? Obviously. And if you're going to try and sell out that run, you want to, <clears throat> you want to add functionality if you can without adding too much expense. And so they've added this fuel cell part. Uh, and these are, these look like they're injection molded pieces. So they paid for tooling for this. Um, <clears throat> Interesting. Um, but uh, I, I am underwhelmed by the electronics. I, and I, I, you know, except for something like Corbin Dallas's blaster where it's got to have that triplet of numbers or Bubba Fett's chest plate or Mando's uh, uh, gauntlet, like, I'm not a big believer in adding electronics or blinky lights to prop replicas. I, I don't think it needs to happen like, it's not a deal breaker for me. But I also understand commerce. And I get, you know, you're, you're trying to sell your investors on, on, on making the tooling for this, which is tens of thousands of dollars to make the injection mold tooling to make something like this. It's, it's a real expense. And then you've got to amortize that across the edition that you've sold. And the fact that there's not an edition number on this tells me that there may have been a lot. But even still, like, um, I would have liked some brighter lights. You know, um, it, it doesn't really show up uh, as brightly as I was hoping. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not casting aspersions. This is a lovely replica. I, I feel like it's a more manageable size, actually, than this. This is, this is definitely like a, um, yeah, what kind of holster would you put this in, right? Like, I mean, does it, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, now I think that this one's going to stay in my gun cabinet and this one will go on the Blade Runner shelf. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, like I said, Sean Morgan is the origin story for this replica. Like he's the one that decided I'm going to replicate something no one else has ever done. And I love him for that because... This is fantastic. That's just, that's a thrilling thing. Uh, and I'm really glad that it eventually became a prop replica. Uh, and we end up with another blaster for my collection. Thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. Uh, and I will see you next time. Cheers. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make how-to videos so much as we make what happen videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw-ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch 
of demerit badges for the screw-ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together, and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron and they are available at tested-store.com.